This video is the long version of how to make saddle cuts with your chop saw or your band saw. In this video, I go into quite a bit of detail about the hows and whys of this technique. If you're looking for a short version, just a real quick summary of how it's done, I did a short video on that, so go find that one if you're not interested in all the details and all the hows and whys of it. Howdy YouTube! I am going to redo a video that I made back in November of 2011. It is how to make saddle cuts with your bandsaw or chop saw on pipe. I don't know if you can make a saddle cut that's not on pipe. But I originally uploaded this video in November of 2011 and technology has changed a lot since then. And since I have a brand new camera, camera number eight I believe, yeah I've gone through a lot of cameras in my video making career here. Um, I thought this would be a good opportunity to learn how to use this camera, learn how to use my new editing software, and just kind of get back in the groove of things here. But real quick, before I get into the meat of the video here, I would just like to say that me making this saddle cut video is what launched me down the road of making metal fabrication videos. Before making the saddle cut video, I had no idea people on YouTube were interested in learning something. I thought YouTube was all about the next viral video, and that's the kind of stuff I was doing. Just short 30 second to a minute videos that were just super silly. So, yeah, this, this video totally changed my path of video making. It's kind of amazing to me that my channel has been around long enough that it's time to remake these videos and bring them into the current technology, right? Okay, so the whole idea of this video is that you don't need a torch or plasma cut or use a tubing notcher on the ends of your tubing, your round pipe, whatever you're using, you don't need fancy tools to make a perfect saddle cut. You can do it with your bandsaw or your chop saw. Now first off, I'm going to show you how to do it here on the bandsaw. I happen to have a miter head bandsaw, and I realize a lot of you out there probably don't have one. But the principle is exactly the same, it's just you change the vise instead of swinging the head, okay? The angle at which you set your bandsaw or your chop saw is going to vary. There's online calculators out there that tell you the angle that you need to set your bandsaw. And do not look for template calculators. Those are for printing out a piece of paper that you're going to roll over the end of your pipe and then saddle cut with your torch or plasma cutter, okay? You're not looking for a template cutter, you're looking for an angle finder, a coping angle finder calculator, okay? They're completely different because this angle will vary depending on which size of pipes you're joining, the angle at which you're joining those pipes, and the wall thickness of those pipes. All three of those are factors to what angle you set your bandsaw at. And real quickly, the three angles you need to know for making a perpendicular connection in your tubing is if you got pipe that's big and small that fit together, so they slide inside each other, right? This is two and seven eighths and this is two and three eighths outside diameter tubing. Then you set your saw to 45 degrees and you'll have a perfect 90 degree connection there. If you have a post in your corral, that is two and seven eighths, and you want to connect a two and three eighths pipe to the outside of it like that, then you cut them off at 20 degrees, and the little pipe will saddle over the big pipe perfectly. See that? Awesome. And of course, if your pipe is the same size, you're gonna set your saw to 33 degrees, and they're gonna fit perfectly. And that's for 90 degree or perpendicular connections. This technique can be used to make a wide range of angle connections, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. That being said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the most common saddle cut, and that is the 33 degree angle cut when you're joining two pieces of pipe that are the same size, okay, at a 90 degree. If I just walk you through the 33 degree cut here, I feel like you'll understand the technique, you'll understand what's going on. 
And then from there, it's up to you to figure out the other angles and everything else. And the first thing you're gonna do with this is make sure you have a really straight first cut. You don't wanna start by cutting you know, something at an angle or having some cut that is you know, wavy this way like the, saw, like, the, like the blade wandered as it went down or something like that. You need a really good straight first cut. It's actually imperative to getting a perfect saddle cut. Oh, right there. That is good and square. So, let's go ahead and cut this one off again. Now, if you're doing a lot of the same pieces, you can go through and cut them all to length square. So you're not changing back and forth from being perfectly square to whatever angle you're doing. All right, does that make sense to you? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so after we got our end cut nice and square, we're going to swing this around to about 33 degrees here. If you don't have an indicator on your saw, like with a chop saw, a lot of times those stamped numbers in that swivel vise are horribly off. Um, check it with a good angle finder. So then what you're going to do is, after you have your nice good square cut on there, you're going to put that so the blade of your saw intersects right here, right down the center of the pipe. So this front point of the blade is on the center of the pipe. Does that make sense? And then you're going to want to put a stop over here. If you don't have a slidey stop thing like this, you can use a C-clamp. And on chop saws, that's actually really difficult to do. And I'll show you how to get around that here in a bit. Then you simply turn this around, half turn, and we'll cut the other side. One thing that's really, really critical with this for a perfect saddle cut is making sure that this face is square. Now on here, a real easy way to do this is I got this machined surface here so I can just set my combination square in here until it's flat because it'll set on that machined surface and then push my pipe up against that and up against the stop and I know that I am square. I like on a chop saw, but you can actually set a square in there because a lot of times, you know, the bed is sitting here. You got a little bit of, you got a little bit of room. After you do this a few times, you'll probably develop an eye for it. And you can do this really quick. Let's make this cut. So let's try it out on our pipe here. See if they fit. Oh, they do not fit. They hit out here in the center. You see that? Now there's three things you can do to attack this problem. Uh, first, and the most easiest in my mind, is to just hit this inside here with the angle grinder. See, I just barely took off some of that and it fits a hundred times better in there. Um, if you notice, like if you get a template for a saddle cut, like if you're gonna use your torch to make saddle cuts and you can go around that template, it's nice and round up here. And that's exactly why, it's because of this problem. So just hitting that with your angle grinder real quick, I mean, it's almost nothing to remove and it'll fit perfectly then at that point. You can readjust your saw come back just a degree or two. You know, instead of doing 33, try 31. Uh, the problem with that is, I can show you here, you'll end up, see how it doesn't fit down here now suddenly. See how that gap is just a little off if you come back a couple degrees. So I don't like doing that. I prefer hitting it with the angle grinder. And the third thing you can do is actually, instead of cutting on the center line of your pipe, cut an eighth of an inch 
off to the side to where you have like a quarter inch flat landing there. That's one way around it too. Also, you will find that the wall thickness of your pipe will have an effect on this. When you're using your chop saw to make these cuts, put your pipe in there, figure out where you're at on center, right? And then, where do you put your clamp? It's really difficult to find a place on a lot of these chop saws, particularly nowadays. I used to have a chop saw that had a nice square edge and I could clamp a piece of angle iron here to the edge. You could actually get the clamp up under the thing. Clamp a piece of angle iron here and then I could put another clamp on there as a stop. And it worked really well. <clears throat> but on these newer ones, it seems like they're all tapered surfaces and it's just almost impossible to find a place to clamp. So what I do now is I just measure each one with the combination square. So put your pipe in there, figure out that you're on center, and then I do it this way and I use the groove of the ruler here and compare that to the end of the vise here. And then when you make that cut, meow, and you roll your pipe over, as you notice, this side of the pipe is gone, right? So you can't measure this way. That's why I do it this way. So I just set the ruler on the end of the pipe, and you can actually get it on the bottom part here to where it sits square. And then I just make sure I'm right back at the same place according to this groove. That works really well. Um, and I want to take just a quick moment to talk about how to get your two points in line with each other. Easiest way on short pieces, well, I guess in long ones, if you have a long enough piece of angle iron, to set an angle iron on your pipe, line it up with the point, and draw your line. I mean, you don't have to draw down a line down the whole thing, obviously, if I just, you know, marked up there, and then marked down there, uh, it'd be golden, right? So that's real easy. Um, once you get long pieces, though, it becomes really difficult. And one of the techniques that actually somewhat works is uh, to use your combination square with a little level in it. Make sure that your combination square sits up above the pipe like this. Cross both points up on top. Rotate it until it's level. Assuming that your saw is level, right? Now when it comes to building Corel, which I do a lot of, when I have the 2 and 7 8 post, I almost never saddle the pipe to it. It takes a lot of time, well, comparatively, to make these saddles, get your pipe the exact right length, get these things, you know, in line with each other, and all that stuff. So what I do is I squish them. And that is really, really fast. That's the way to go. Um, it takes seconds for me to squish these, and I do have a video on squishing these. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make saddle cuts with your porta band or your angle grinder. It's not quite as straightforward as maybe it seems. The ever elusive question Does the light go off when you shut the door? Well,